Hi there, today I'm going to be showing how we can use ChatGPT to classify leads created within Marketo. In order to do this, we are going to use the Zapier automation tool to query ChatGPT for the classification of any new leads created within Marketo. And then we're going to use Zapier to update these new leads with the GPT classification. And this blog post is a follow on blog post from the Marketo lead scoring blog post. And in this Marketo lead scoring blog post, I walk through how to develop your lead classification prompt for ChatGPT and also how to iteratively test and fine tune this prompt before you move on to all the implementation steps I have down below. So this is where we're actually going to start this video is by first going through how to test and develop our prompt so that we're ready to do all these implementation steps further along in this video. So let's jump to the Marketo lead scoring blog post so we can see how to develop and test our prompt for ChatGPT. So in this blog post, we are going to go to the demo and firmware Marketo lead scoring model three section. And in here, as I stress, developing your prompt is the most important thing. The implementation steps, as I'll show you later on, are pretty simple and straightforward. But the hardest part is iteratively testing your prompt and measuring results so that you can get the desired classification you're looking for from ChatGPT for all the leads you are sending it. And it's very easy when you want to test one lead at a time. So here, for example, I've got a prompt where I'm going to ask ChatGPT to ask, where I'm going to ask ChatGPT to tell me if someone is a good fit for Telnex's SMS services. And a tip, which took me a while to learn, is that if you want to do a new line when you're talking to ChatGPT, hold shift and enter at the same time or shift and return, and that will do a line break. And then you can put in the information. So you can put in Tyron Pretorius, Tyron at the workflowpro.com. And then I can put in my website address too. And then we can hit enter. And I'll pause it here for a second while it's generating its response. So ChatGPT has finished its response and it's given me the output I was looking for. It told me whether the person was a good or bad fit. And it also gave me the reason that it thinks the person is a good or bad fit. So this is good for initial testing to develop your prompt, but you really want to test this prompt out over a large number of leads that you know are both good and bad and see what answer ChatGPT gives you for both the good and the bad leads. And to do this within the ChatGPT chat interface would be very time consuming and tedious. So the best way to test out your prompt across a large number of leads is actually using a Google Sheet such as this one here. And within this Google Sheet, we use the GPT for Sheets and Docs application. And you can follow this link in the blog post here in order to install this application. So once you've installed this application, you can then access it from within your Google Sheet by going to Extensions, GPT for Sheets and Docs, and then the very first time you open up this application, you will need to put in your ChatGPT API key. And where you get that is by following this link here that I have in the blog post. It will take you to your account and then you can create a new API key or use an existing one. I recommend creating a new API key for each project or use case that you have. So you can see here, I've got one for my Python code and I've got one for my Google Sheets. It just makes tracking easier. So later on, when you're looking at how many API requests have been made to your account, you can see all the ones that have been made using the Python key and all the ones made using the Google Sheets key. So you can tell how many API requests each project is using. Once you have copied your API key, 
You can then go to the set API key section in order to set that API key. And then once you've done that, you can see the list of available functions. And you can click the drop down arrows to get a to get a brief description of each one and get links to the documentation and also videos. And you can also set the settings that your GPT formulas will use. And you can choose the model, whether it's GPT 3.5 or GPT 4 that you want to use. You can also edit things like the creativity, the max response size. And there's also more controls here that you can use. And all of these will again affect the output that's generated from all these functions here. And the one I'm going to show you how to use today is just the simple GPT formula. And the way this works is that we just have the three letters GPT, then we open up a bracket, and then we put in the prompt. So this is the prompt that we have. And then we also include the information about the person here, and we separate them with a comma. So in this case, we ask it to determine whether the person is a good fit for Telnex. And then we ask it to format its answer with the fit and then the reason. And then we include the person information in the prompt as well. And then we can drag this formula down. We can drag this formula down across all the leads in our Google Sheet. And then we can just do some formatting to extract the fit that ChatGBT gave us, as well as the reason it gave us for this fit. And then what I've also done is I've done a simple formula which just compares the ChatGPT fit from column H with the human decision about whether the person is a good fit. So obviously you'd import all these leads with their name, website, and email. You'd import all of these into the Google Sheet, and then you'd manually assess whether you think they are a good fit for your company. So you'd put in your human values here of either good fit or bad fit. And then we concatenate all the information about the person and we send it to ChatGPT in our request. And then what we do is we compare ChatGPT's fit to this human value using this formula. And if it's a match, if they both say good fit or they both say bad fit, then this will be true. However, if they disagree, then this value will be false. And then what I do in the top left-hand corner here is I count the number of matches that we get in this column. So I count how many times it's equal to true. And then I repeat this process for the lead quality field. So the lead quality field could be any existing lead scoring field that you're using in Marketo. And you want to compare how this field that already exists, you want to compare how this performs with ChatGPT's fit. So then again, we use the exact same formula before where if the GPT fit is equal to the lead score that you have from Marketo, then it's equal to true. If they disagree, it's equal to false. And then I've just got a formula in the top left-hand corner again that counts the number of times that your existing Marketo lead score agrees with the ChatGPT lead score and outputs the formula here. So then you can use these two formulas to quickly assess how this prompt has performed because we can see that according to the human match, the GPT score matches 50% of the time, whereas when we have the existing lead score that we get from Marketo, the GPT score matches 60% of the time. So we can use these two formulas here to see how this prompt performs. And then if we want to iterate and test out a new prompt, what we want to do is we want to clone this template tab as I've done here, and then we'll edit the prompt slightly. So in this case, we're, in this case, we are just going to add a good customer for Telnex's SMS services. 
So we just add in that little piece of text here. And then the chat GPT formula will run automatically and compute all its new fit values and reasons once we modify the prompt. And then we can compare how did this prompt perform compared to the previous prompt by comparing these values to these ones. So we can see that the match rate was better in this sheet compared to this sheet. So we know that this prompt is a better prompt than the one we have in the test one tab here. So let me show you how we can do that live. So we are going to clone, we are going to duplicate our template. Uh, we are going to call it test two. And in here, we're gonna say a good customer for Telnex's SIP trunking services. And then we're going to hit enter we'll notice that the GPT response column here is loading. And then it slowly populates with all the values based on this new prompt. And then we can see the match rate here has updated too. So now we can see that this prompt is actually the best prompt so far because it's got the best human match. So here it was 44% in our initial template it was 50%. But now in this example here, with this new prompt, we get an 80% match rate. So now we can either move forward with iterating and keep on testing prompts and trying to get better and better match scores in the top left-hand corner here. Or once you decide that you're happy with your prompt and you're ready for implementation, then we can move on to Marketo and Zapier to show how this is done. Now that we have fine tuned our prompt, the next step is to figure out how to send our leads from Marketo to Zapier so that we can classify them using ChatGPT. As I will show you later on, we are using the new lead event within the Marketo app in Zapier. And if you want to send every single lead that gets created in your Marketo instance to Zapier for classification, then you don't need to do any of the steps in this section here, you can ignore them. However, on the other side, if you don't want to send every single lead you create to Zapier and you want to selectively send people over, the way you do that is using a smart campaign in Marketo. So what we do is in Zapier, we use a constraint here to say only trigger if the new lead is added to this list, which is a static list in Marketo called score with GPT. And the way we add the, the way we add people to this list in Marketo is we have a smart campaign that adds people to this list once they meet certain criteria. And it is this smart list that we define, which will determine who gets sent over to Zapier for classification. So in this case, we can say any person who's created by filling out the contact sales form, and we can add additional constraints here if we want, like people who, like people who are created from certain lists or people who have certain sources when they are created. We can use all of these as constraints on the trigger. And we can also put in additional filters here to say, someone must be created with a certain person source, but their email address must not contain Gmail because we don't want to send all these free mails over to Zapier because it's unlikely that ChatGPT will have any information on will have any information on all these free mail addresses. So there's no point sending them to Zapier for classification. So we filter all these people out. So we know that once someone passes the smart list criteria, we'll add them to the list, the score with GPT list, and that will then trigger this zap to run to begin the scoring workflow with ChatGPT. One other thing worth noting is that by default, this trigger will only bring in a person's email address and their first and last name. So if you need any additional information in order to score these people with ChatGPT, then you have to include all these additional fields here in the trigger. 
So the only additional field I want in this example is the website field. So then we will get all these fields when someone is sent over from Marketo. And then we can use these fields and build them into our prompt that we sent to ChatGPT. And the very first time you set up this action, you will need to specify your API key from your account. And you can get that value. You can get that API key by following this link in the blog post. It will bring you to your account. And then I recommend creating a separate API key for each project. So in this case, you'd create a new secret key for Zapier, and then you'd copy and paste that in when setting up this action. And then this is the prompt that we worked on and that we fine tuned from our Google Sheet. And all we have to do is specify the lead information that we obtained from Marketo. And you can play with all these different parameters here, but I'm not going to because this prompt and specifying this information worked well enough for me without editing any of these prompts. But if you want better performance, then you can tweak all of these parameters. And then this is the output we get from ChatGPT, where it tells us the fit that someone has and also the reason for this fit. Once we have the output from ChatGPT, we then need to parse out the fit and the reason for the fit so that in step number four here, when we go to update the lead in Marketo, we want to be able to put the fit in one field called lead quality, and we want to put the reason for this fit in a separate field called lead quality detail. So we need to be able to parse these out from the chat GPT response here. And the way we do that is using Python code, but don't be intimidated by this because once again, chat GPT can help us. So the way I got the Python code for this code by Zapier action is actually by using ChatGPT. So if you go to this blog post and you follow this link here, this ChatGPT chat link, you will see how I prompted ChatGPT in order to get the Python code I needed from Zapier. So I told it, please generate Python code to extract the fit and reason from the text below where the format of the text is fit and reason. And then I gave it the example text. So once it had the example text and it knew what output I wanted, it gave me the Python code I needed. And as we can see, it gives us the desired output. So then I just copied and pasted this Python code into this code by Zapier action. And then when I hit run, it gives me the fit and the reason for that fit, which I can then use in step number four to update the lead with these values. And that's all there is to it. That's how we can classify and score leads from Marketo using ChatGPT within a Zapier workflow. And this is only one of the ways you can score leads within your Marketo instance. In the Marketo lead scoring blog post, I go through two other ways that you can score your leads in Marketo. And I also show you how you can build all three of these scoring models into a marketing qualification mechanism. So take a look at this blog post to further your lead scoring knowledge in Marketo.